Engineering Surveys, Lecture Number 1, Horizontal Simple Curve. Our lecture content will be, first, the elements or parts of a simple curve. Then we will derive the basic formulas for a simple curve. And we'll solve sample problems in simple curves. Part 1, Elements or Parts of a Simple Curve. So, bago tayo pumunta sa mismong elements or parts ng simple curve, magkaroon muna tayo ng konting background sa ano ba yung highway curves. So, meron tayong dalawang klase ng highway curves. Yung horizontal curve at yung vertical curve. So, vertical curve, para yan sa pagtaas or pagbaba ng kalsada. So, dan tayo sa horizontal curve. So, horizontal curve naman, ay ginagamit para magkaroon ng transition yung road natin to right or to left. So, bakit nga ba natin kailangan ng curves or ng horizontal curve sa ating highway road? So, for example, meron tayong isang road. So, represent natin yung road by lines. So, diretso yung road. Ito ay top view. Then at some point, yung road natin is nag-turn right. So sa common road, pwede magbawas ng bilis yung isang vehicle, isang sasakyan, para makapag-turn right safely dito sa ating uh, road setup. Pero sa halimbawa sa isang expressway na merong minimum speed, kung ganyan ang condition ng road natin, so, alimbawa, meron tayong uh, isang vehicle na tumatakbo sa minimum speed na 60 km per hour. Pagdating niya sa point kung saan kailangan niyang mag-turn right, so, pwede itong mag ng danger dun sa sasakyan. So, pwede siyang mag-overturn dahil dun sa kanyang uh, bilis, tas bigla siyang kakanan. So, ang ginagawa natin as engineers is... We designed the highways na magkakaroon ng transition yung road natin from its direction turning to right or to left. So, nagkakaroon tayo ng transition at yung transition na yun ay yung curves natin or yung horizontal curves natin. So, for example dito, maglalagay tayo ng horizontal curve. So, yung sasakyan natin na tumatakbo ng, let's say, 60 km per hour, sa halip na mag-turn right siya sa point na to, kung saan pwede siyang uh, maaksidente dahil sa bilis niya. So, magkakaroon siya ngayon ng transition dito, unti-unti siyang mag-turn right dun sa ating simple curve. So, yung ating simple curve ay made of uh, arc of a circle. So we have four types of horizontal curves. The simple curve, which will be our topic for this lecture, the compound curve, the reverse curve, and the spiral curve. So punta na tayo dun sa elements or parts ng simple curve. So makikita nyo dito sa kanan yung listahan ng mga basic parts or common parts ng simple curves. So, nakalista dyan lahat at iisa-isahin natin kung saan natin yon makikita sa isang uh, highway curve. Let's say ito yung setup ng ating road. So, meron tayong isang road na nag-turn right. And, syempre, naglagay tayo ng simple curve to transition yung pag- uh, kanan ng vehicle. So, yung kabuuan ng linya na ito, at ito rin kabila, ang tinatawag na tangent line. Dahil tangent sila sa ating simple curve. So, yung line na to, at itong kabilang line na to, ang tinatawag natin na tangent distance. Ito yung ating back tangent, at ito naman yung forward tangent. Since yung kabuuan distance na to ay tangent line, so, mula tangent line, pagdating sa point na to, lilipat na yung vehicle papunta sa 
curve. Kaya ito ngayon yung tinatawag na point of curvature. From tangent line, pupunta na sa curve yung ating vehicle. So, ito ngayon yung point PC. Then, mula dito sa curve, and dito sa curve yung ating vehicle, pagdating niya sa point na to, lilipat na siya sa line na to, or sa tangent line na to. So, mula curve, punta siya sa tangent line, ito ngayon yung point of tangency. So, ito ngayon yung point of tangency. So, yan na yung tatlong element ng ating simple curve. Punta naman tayo sa point na to, kung saan nag-intersect yung dalawang tangent line. Ito ngayon yung tinatawag na point of intersection or vertex. So, ilagyan natin dito is point of intersection. Then, syempre, since itong simple curve natin ay isang arc, automatic ang isang arc ay merong radius. So, ito nga yung dalawang to, ang radius ng ating simple curve. And syempre, kung meron tayong radius, at meron tayong arc, yung arc natin ay may katumbas na central angle. And dito, ang tawag natin sa central angle na yon ay ang angle of intersection. So, tinatawag din to na angle of intersection dahil equal siya sa angle na form or mabubuo sa intersection ng ating dalawang tangent line. So, bakit ba siya naging equal? So, i-consider natin yung quadrilateral na mapoform nitong dalawang tangent distance at dalawang radius. So, quadrilateral meaning ang total interior angle nila ay 360 degrees. So, syempre yung tangent line natin is perpendicular yan always sa radius. So, 90 degrees yung dalawang ito. So, total of 180 degrees. So, ibig sabihin din nun, ang magiging total ng angle of intersection at yung angle na mapaform dito ay dapat maging total sa 180 degrees. And pag tinignan din natin yung tangent line na ito, naging supplement ng angle na to yung ating angle of intersection. So, ibig sabihin, ang total din nilang dalawa ay 180 degrees. So, kung ganun, yung dalawang angle na to, yung intersection ng ating tangent line, at yung central angle pala ay equal para pareho silang magtotal ng 180 degrees sa angle na ito. So, yun yung angle of intersection. Para naman sa length of curve, syempre, ang length of curve na natin is yung total length ng ating simple curve or yung arc na ito. Then, para naman sa long chord, so, alam naman natin na ang chord ng isang circle ay isang line na nag-pass through the circle. So, para sa long chord ng isang highway simple curve, pagdugtungin lang natin yung PC at PT. Then, yung line na to, yan na yung ating long chord. Okay. So, para naman sa external distance at middle ordinate, so, maglagay tayo ng line dito. And, syempre, yung length na ito, equal yan sa radius. Alam natin yan dahil, syempre yung line na to, alam natin na equal sa radius, since mula sa center ng circle yun, papunta sa uh, isang side ng ating arc. Ito nga yung natirang length na to, mula sa curve, papunta sa point of intersection ng ating tangent line. Ito yung tinatawag na external distance. At ito namang distance na to, 
So, yung nandun sa loob ng ating curve, papunta sa long chord, yan naman yung tinatawag na middle coordinate. Ayan. So, okay na tayo sa external distance and middle coordinate. Para naman dito sa tatlong element pa natin, subchord, offset distance, and deflection or offset angle. So, maglagay tayo ng another chord dito sa ating curve. So, from PC to any point on the curve. So, yung line na to, since naging chord siya ng ating curve, at within the length siya ng ating highway, yan ngayon yung ating subchord. So, mula sa point na to, papunta sa point na to. And yung uh, point kung saan tumama yung subchord sa ating curve, meron yung katumbas ngayon na offset distance. So, from point na to, pag kinonekta natin yan sa tangent distance, so dapat yung uh, line na idodraw natin from this point to tangent distance is magiging perpendicular sa tangent distance. Yan ngayon yung uh, tinatawag na offset distance. At syempre, yung angle na na-form ng ating subchord at ng tangent distance, yan naman yung deflection angle or offset angle nung line na kinraid natin. So, yan yung mga basic elements ng ating simple curve. Part 2, Deriving Basic Formulas of a Simple Curve. So, uh, i-derive natin yung mga elements ng simple curve in terms of radius. So, mag-start tayo by considering yung triangle na mapaform ng PC, PI at yung center ng arc ng ating simple curve. So, alam natin na ito yung ating tangent distance. Then, yung side na to ay magiging length ng ating radius plus yung length ng external distance. Then, syempre, yung central angle natin or yung angle of intersection ay mahati sa dalawa. So, ang value nito ay I over 2. And, syempre, yung radius natin ay magiging isa sa mga leg ng triangle. So, first, isolve natin yung tangent distance in terms of radius. At since ito ay isang right triangle, pwede natin gamitin yung trigonometric functions. So, gamitin natin yung concept ng Sokatoa. So, since yung tangent natin ay naging opposite ng angle, then yung radius ay adjacent niya, dito tayo sa Toa. So, tangent theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. So, yung ating theta ay I over 2. Then, ang opposite is tangent, adjacent is radius. By cross multiplication, lipat yung radius sa kabilang side. So, tangent distance is equal to radius multiplied by tangent ng I over 2. So, first formula natin is tangent. Next, solve for the external distance in terms of the radius. So, balik tayo sa triangle natin. Dito sa line na to, na-involve ang external distance, yan ay hypotenuse. So, by Sokatoa, gagamitin naman natin yung hypotenuse at adjacent. So, dito tayo sa K or cosine theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So, cosine theta is I over 2 equal to adjacent which is yung radius natin all over the hypotenuse, which is yung radius plus the external distance. So, by cross multiplication, yung R plus E is lilipat sa kabilang side ng ating equal sign. At yung cosine I over 2 ang magiging denominator ng radius. So, transpose natin yung uh, radius sa kabilang side ng ating equal sign. So, magiging negative. Then, pwede natin i-common factor yung uh, radius. So, magiging external distance is equal to radius 
multiplied by the quantity 1 over cosine i over 2 minus 1. Or, pwede rin natin itong i-write as radius multiplied by the quantity second i over 2 minus 1. Punta naman tayo sa triangle na papaform na itong ating long chord, radius, at yung kabilang side na. So, same as kanina, ito ay isang right triangle. So, yung isang leg ay magiging half ng ating long chord. Then, another leg is yung radius minus the middle ordinate. And the magiging hypotenuse natin is yung total length ng radius. So, solve muna natin yung long chord in terms of the radius. So, by Sokato again. So, yung long chord natin ay naging opposite ng angle. And yung radius ay hypotenuse. So, gamitin natin yung so or sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So, sine ng theta is i over 2. Then, yung opposite is long chord over 2. And of course, yung hypotenuse ay radius. So by cross multiplication, lipat natin yung radius sa kabilang side ng ating equal sign. Then again, by cross multiplication, yung 2 naman ang ilipat natin sa kabilang side ng equation. So ang natira na lang sa isang side ay yung long chord, which is equal to 2 times ng radius multiplied by sine ng i over 2. So, yun yung formula natin for long chord in terms of radius. Then, solve for the middle ordinate in terms pa rin of radius. So, by trigonometric functions, so katoa, yung isang leg natin equal to radius minus middle ordinate so, yung leg na to ay magiging adjacent ng ating angle at yung radius ay hypotenuse. So, ang gagamitin natin ay yung ka or cosine theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So, cosine theta is i over 2 equal to adjacent natin, radius minus middle ordinate all over the hypotenuse o yung ating radius. So, by cross multiplication, Lipat natin yung radius sa kabilang side ng equation. Then, transpose natin yan yung middle ordinate sa left side ng equation and sa right side naman yung a term na ito. So, yung ating middle ordinate ay maging equal sa radius minus the radius multiplied by the quantity cosine i over 2. Then, i-factor out natin yung radius. So, ang formula natin for middle ordinate is radius multiplied by the quantity 1 minus cosine i over 2. Para naman sa length ng ating curve, so gamitin natin yung formula ng length of arc. So formula ng length of arc is s minus r theta. Na kung saan yung theta natin ay dapat naka-region measure. Pero alam naman natin na uh, yung ating angle of intersection ay in degrees measure. So, ibig sabihin, sa formula natin for length of curve, dapat automatic na yung central angle natin or yung angle of intersection ay convert sa radian measure. So, yung i ay i-multiply natin sa pi over 180 para makonvert siya. So, length of curve is equal to the radius times i multiplied by pi over 180. So, pagdugtungin natin yan. So, final formula natin for length of curve is equal to pi multiplied by radius multiplied by the angle of intersection all over 180. Next, punta naman tayo sa degree of curvature. So, in land surveying, para identify yung sharpness ng curve, naging common practice na na ibigay yung value ng radius. So, mas maliit na value ng radius, mas sharp yung curve. 
At habang lumalaki yung value niya, unti-unting nagpa-flatten yung curve. Pero sa usapang highway, i-define natin yung sharpness ng curve through the degree of curvature. So pag sinabi natin degree of curvature, ito ay value ng isang angle na may katumbas na value ng radius sa isang fixed length ng arc or ng chord. So meron tayong dalawang definition for the degree of curvature yung arc definition at yung chord definition. So, in arc definition, meron tayong value ng radius sa bawat degree of curvature sa isang fixed length ng arc, which is equal to one station. So, pag sinabi natin na one station, automatic equal yun sa 20 meters. So, isolve natin ngayon yung value ng degree of curve in terms of radius. Since ito ay isang sector, so meron tayong arc, uh, central angle, at yung radius natin, solve lang din natin siya gamit yung formula ng length of a curve. So, one station is equal to r theta. At alam naman natin na yung theta ay in radian measure and yung ating d or degree of curvature ay in degree measure. So, multiply natin yung d by pi all over 100. 80. So, direct substitution, 1 station is 20 meters, equal to the radius times the degree of curvature, multiplied by pi over 180. Then, by cross multiplication, the degree of curvature is equal to 20, multiplied by 180 all over radius times pi. Then, calculate natin yung ating coefficient. So, degree of curvature is equal to 1145.5. 916 all over the radius. Then sa ating chord definition, kinakalculate naman natin yung ating degree of curvature katumbas yung isang fixed length ng chord. So yung chord na yun is equal to 1 station. So sa case naman na to, mag-form tayo ng isang right triangle gamit yung half length ng ating chord. So, ang length ng uh, chord natin is one station equivalent to 20 meters. So, half nun is 10 meters. Then, by trigonometric functions, so, katawa, so, since yung half ng ating long chord ay naka-opposite sa ating degree of curvature, then yung radius natin ay hypotenuse ng ating right triangle. So, gamitin natin yung formula na so, or sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So, sine theta, yung ating degree of curvature, ay mahahati rin sa dalawa. So, theta is equal to d over 2. Then, yung opposite natin, equal to 10 meters. And yung hypotenuse ay equal sa radius. Then, transpose natin yung ating trigonometric function sine magiging d over 2 is inverse sine ng 10 all over the radius. Then, cross-multiply natin yung 2. So, formula natin for degree of curvature is 2 times ng inverse sine ng 10 all over the radius. Para naman ma-solve yung radius in terms of degree of curvature, so, i-cross-multiply lang natin tong equation na to. So, radius is equal to 10 all over sine d over 2. Or, pwede natin siyang i-write as 10 multiplied by cosecant ng 10 meters over 2. Pero pinaka-common na ginagamit natin for degree of curvature ay yung arc definition. So, yung formula na ito. Part 3, Sample Problems in Simple Curves. So, sample problem number 1. Find the length of curve if the degree of curve is 5 degrees. And the central angle is 72 degrees, 30 minutes. Solve also the radius, the tangent distance, external distance, and middle ordinate. Use arc basis. So kung mapapansin natin, yung ating mga basic formulas ay nakabase lahat sa radius. So bago natin solve yung length of curve, isolve muna natin kung ano ba yung radius ng ating simple curve. So dahil given ang Degree of curve equal to 5 degrees. Solve natin yung radius gamit yung formula na ito. 
So, degree of curve is equal to 1145.916 all over the radius. So, cross multiply, magiging radius is equal to 1145.916 all over the degree of curve. So, direct substitution. Masosolve natin yung radius is equal to 229.183 meters. Since nasolve na natin yung radius, masosolve na natin yung ibang pang elements na pinapasolve sa tanong na to. So, una is length of curve. So, gamit yung formula na to, length of curve is equal to pi times the radius times the angle of intersection all over 180. So, direct substitution Length of curve is equal to 290 meters. Next, solve for the tangent distance. So, gamit naman yung formula na to, tangent distance is equal to radius times tangent of central angle over 2. So, direct substitution pa rin, tangent distance is equal to 168.044 meters. Next is solve for the external distance. So, gamitin naman natin yung formula na ito. So, external distance is equal to the radius multiplied by the quantity 1 over cosine i over 2 minus 1. So, again, direct substitution, masasolve natin yung external distance is equal to 55.2 Zero, zero, 006 meters. Then last required element ay yung middle ordinate. So gamit naman yung formula na ito, middle ordinate is equal to radius multiplied by the quantity 1 minus cosine i over 2. So by direct substitution, solve natin yung value ng middle ordinate is equal to 44.36 meters. So sample number 1. Next, sample problem number 2. Two tangents intersect at V at station 12 plus 705.84. The angle of intersection is 34 degrees. The stationing of PC is 12 plus 628. Without changing the location of PC and the sharpness of the curve, it is desired to shorten the length of the curve by 50 meters. Determine the stationing of the new point of intersection, PI, and the new point of tangency, PT. So, pag sinabi natin na station, pinapakalanan natin yung isang point gamit yung distance niya from isang point of origin. So, ang format nito, yung first digits ay measurements in kilometers, then plus yung next digits ay measurements in meters. So, sabi sa umpisa ng tanong, the stationing of V is 12 plus 705.84, meaning mula sa ating point of origin, ang distance ng V ay 12 kilometers and 705.84. Para naman sa stationing ng PC, given dito ay 12 plus 628, ibig sabihin naman nun, ang layo ng PC mula sa ating point of origin ay 12 kilometers and 628 meters. So, kung diretsong linya man yan, curved lines, so, yun yung sukat ng road na layo ng ating V at PC mula sa point of origin. So, sinabing condition sa tanong, isa-shorten natin yung curve by 50 meters, pero, hindi magbabago ang location ng PC, meaning, ang station PC is equal pa rin sa 12 plus 628. And, hindi rin magbabago yung sharpness of the curve. Ibig sabihin din nun, yung radius ng curve sa umpisa, siya pa rin yung radius ng curve kapag nag-adjust yung length of curve. So, para solve to, mag-drawing tayo ng figure. So, ito yung ating PC, V, at PT. Ito yung ating curve. So, i-adjust natin siya by 50 
meters. So, let's say ito yung magiging bago nating curve. At ito yung 50 meters shortening ng curve. Ito yung magiging bagong PI at ito yung magiging bagong PT. So, para magkaroon ng sariling notation, yung bago at yung dati nating stationing, so gawin natin to na PT prime. Wala tayong ibang given kundi angle of intersection at yung stationing ng ating V at PC. Pero gamit yung stationing ng V at PC, madedetermine natin kung ano ba yung initial length ng ating tangent distance. So tangent distance is equal to stationing ng V minus stationing ng PC. So 12 plus 705.84 minus 12 plus 628. So 12 minus 12 is 0. 705.84 minus 628 is 77.84. So take note lang na pag nilagay natin yung stationing, kung nag-0 ang kilometers, ilagay pa rin natin na 0. At kung yung meters natin is less than 100, lagyan natin siya ng digit na 0 sa umpisa. So, ibig sabihin, tangent distance is 77.84 meters. So, gamit naman yung value ng ating initial tangent distance, isolve na natin yung value ng radius. Since common yung radius natin sa first setup at sa magiging susunod na setup. So, tangent distance is equal to radius times tangent ng i over 2. By cross multiplication, so, maging radius is equal to tangent distance all over tangent i over 2. Direct substitution, masasolve natin yung radius is equal to 254.603 meters. Since may value na tayo ng radius, pwede na natin ngayong masolve kung ano ba yung length of curve. So, length of curve is equal to pi ri all over 180. So, ang sinasolve muna natin is yung initial length ng curve. So, direct substitution, masasolve natin yung initial length ng curve is equal to 151.084 meters. Then, mula sa initial length ng curve, ang sabi sa tanong, it is desired to shorten the length of curve by 50 meters. So, yung maiging length na ng curve natin ay 151.084 minus 50 meters. So, yung magiging length ng curve natin is 101.084 meters. Since nakuha na natin yung adjusted length ng curve, isolve na rin natin yung magiging bagong value ng ating angle of intersection. So, same formula. Length is equal to pi ri over 180. Then, direct substitute natin yung length of curve na adjusted and yung ating radius. So, by cross multiplication, maiging i is equal to 101.084 times 180 all over pi times the radius 254.603. So, masasolve natin yung adjusted angle of intersection is equal to 22.748 degrees. Then, gamit rin yan, pwede na natin isolve kung ano ba yung adjusted length ng ating tangent distance. So, gamit pa rin yung formula ng tangent distance, then direct substitution, radius is 254.603, and I will be 22.748 degrees. Yung ating adjusted na tangent distance is equal to 51.217 meters. So, gamit ngayon yung adjusted length ng tangent distance at yung adjusted length ng curve, pwede na natin masolve ang bagong stationing ng PI at ng PT. So, para sa stationing ng PI, mag-base tayo sa stationing ng PC. Mula sa PC, ang naging distance ng PI ay yung value ng ating tangent distance. So, adjusted stationing ng PI is equal to stationing ng PC plus tangent distance. So, direct substitution, stationing ng PC is 12 plus 628. Then, yung length ng ating tangent distance is 0 kilometers plus 51.217 meters. So, makukuha natin bagong stationing ng PI is 12 plus 679.217.
para naman sa adjusted stationing ng PT, mag-base pa rin tayo sa stationing ng PC. So, distance ng ating PT mula sa PC ay yung length ng ating curve. Ibig sabihin, stationing ng PT is equal to stationing ng PC plus L. So, stationing ng PC is 12 plus 628 at ang ating length ng curve is 0 plus 101.084. So, adjusted stationing ng PT is equal to 12 plus 709.084. So, yan yung ating sample problem number 2. So, last problem, sample problem number 3. A simple curve has a central angle of 60 degrees. The stationing of the point of curvature is equal to 5 plus 900. The offset distance from the station PT to the tangent line passing through the PC is 108 meters long. Determine A, the degree of the curve, and B, the stationing of a point A on the curve if it forms a deflection angle from the tangent at PC equal to 20 degrees. Mag-drawing ulit tayo ng figure para sa tanong na to. So, ito yung ating PC, PI at PT. At ito yung central angle natin equal to 60 degrees. So, sabi sa ating tanong, Meron daw tayong offset distance from the station PT to the tangent line passing through PC. So, extend natin yung tangent distance ng PC to PI at maglalagay tayo ng offset distance mula sa PT papunta sa line na yung extend natin. So, ito yung ating offset distance X equal to 108 meters. At syempre yung katumbas na offset angle or deflection angle ng ating offset distance ay yung angle na mapaform ng ating tangent distance at ng long chord. So para masolve yung ating deflection angle, equal yan sa central angle ng ating chord na para sa case na to ay equal sa value ng I all over 2. So deflection angle is I over 2 equal to 30 degrees. Since na-solve na natin yung deflection angle, pwede natin gamitin yung right triangle na form na to para ma-solve yung value ng ating long chord. So, by trigonometric functions, so, or sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, solve natin yung value ng long chord. So, direct substitution, sine 30 degrees is equal to 108 all over long chord. So, by cross multiplication, long chord is equal to 108 over sine 30 degrees equal to 216 meters. Since na-solve natin yung value ng long chord, pwede natin ngayon gamitin yung formula ng long chord natin para ma-solve yung value ng radius. So, yung formula natin is long chord is equal to, is equal to 2 times ng radius multiplied by sine i over 2. By cross multiplication, makukuha natin yung radius is equal to long chord. All over 2 times ng sine i over 2. Then direct substitution, radius is also equal to 216 meters. Actually, yung na-form kasi na triangle ng long chord at ng dalawang radius ay equilateral triangle. Kaya equal ang radius natin at ang long chord. Since may value na tayo ng radius, masasolve na natin ngayon yung pinapasolve sa letter A. So, determine the degree of the curve. By direct substitution, ang degree ng curve is equal to 1145.916 all over the radius which is equal to 216. So, degree of curve is equal to 5.305 degrees or equal to 5 degrees, 18 minutes. So for letter B, maglagay tayo sa ating simple curve ng subcord na ang deflection angle daw ay 20 degrees from the tangent at PC. So ito yung ating subcord and idugtong natin yan sa center ng ating simple curve. Since 20 degrees ang deflection angle, ang katumbas niya na central angle dapat ay twice ng kanyang 
value, which is equal to 40 degrees. So, solve for stationing ng A. Para masolve natin yung stationing ng A, alamin natin yung distance from station PC to station A, which is equal to the length of the curve. So, sabihin natin to na L sub 1. So, yung L sub 1 natin is equal siya sa pi times radius times yung central angle na katumbas ng L sub 1 or denote natin as I sub 1 all over 180. So, direct substitution, pi times 216 times 40 degrees all over 180. So, L sub 1 is equal to 150.796 meters. So, solve for station A. Station A is equal to station PC plus L sub 1. Equal to, so given you station PC, 5 plus 900 plus length of curve, 0 plus 150.796. So, solve natin. Since sa stationing natin, yung measurement in meters ay magiging 1050.796 Yung 1,000 ay i-convert na natin in 1 kilometer. So, mag add na siya sa 5 kilometers. Station A is equal to 6 plus 0, 50.796. So, yan yung ating sample problem number 3. And that concludes our lecture number 1, Horizontal Simple Curves. So thank you for watching and I hope na ipaliwanag ko ng maayos yung ating lecture number one.